Hey YouTube, John here, and today I'm joined by Whistle. This is our family dog. Yes, yeah, she's cute, isn't she? <coughs> anyway, I uh, haven't been on in a couple days. I wanted to get on and make a video. So I'm trying something new. I started this on, I guess, Wednesday? Wednesday morning. And I, I thought about talking about it then, or even talking about it beforehand. But I hate to bring up in a recorded sense every little thing I want to get into because you run into one of two things. Either you end up getting latched to something simply because you put it out that you were going to do it and feeling committed to it, or you end up changing a lot of things because, you know, we're, we're all going through life and we're trying to, to figure things out. And you, you look like a flake. And anyone who... who doesn't look like a flake, and I'm not talking about commitments you make to others, but just things you, you try. I don't know, either they're, they're not trying a lot of stuff, or uh, they're being disingenuous, which is what most people do. They try a lot of things, but they just don't put it out there until they feel kind of secure in that. So, all that rambling, to get to this, I have started a, a fasting program. So, this was something I was really skeptical of. Um, I, I first kind of got interested in the idea, um, when I saw, and I'll, I'll put the video, like, maybe, like, right here or something, uh, this video by Stuff You Should Know, where they were talking about this guy who fasted for, I'm gonna throw a number out there, I'm sure you'll, you'll see it on the video if I'm wrong, but I think it was, like, a year? He goes for, like, a year without eating huge guy, loses a bunch of weight, and then gets back and he's fine. Um, and so this guy uh, talks about the effects that he suffered, and it, it's medically documented. Um, and I, I was really kind of torn and conflicted when I saw this, because my own, my own bias has said that that's not possible. You can't not eat for a year. You'll die, right? Um, but I'd really come to respect stuff uh, you should, uh, no, Today I Found Out, sorry. Really come to respect the Today I Found Out YouTube channel for researching their stuff, and, and so I was like, oh, I'm really torn. I, I kind of trust this person, but the stuff he's saying is crazy. Sorry, I'm having trouble talking right now. So I, I go on, and I, um... I look up the case, I look up the, the articles, I look up the, both the medical articles and the news articles and the interviews, and it seems to check out, it all seems to be legitimate, and, you know, it, it, you could argue, like, well, maybe sneaking food and everything, but uh, the way they verified it was, you know, pretty solid, they um, checked out his blood sugar levels, right? So, I mean, even if he's eating something, let's say... He's eating something with no, no sugars in it. When I talk about sugars, I'm, I'm not talking about candy. I'm talking about, you know, carbohydrates or, or any kind of energy-providing substance in there. It doesn't really matter. Like, let's say the guy's eating styrofoam. Okay. Uh, I don't know the side effects of that, but um, <clears throat> if you're not in, ingesting calories, I mean, that kind of takes us back to point A of, well, he's not effectively eating. Um... So that was kind of my first thing, but I, I didn't want to, to base something I was going to do on a single case. Like, this one guy didn't eat for a year. Maybe there was some weird going on. Maybe he did trick the doctors. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But it, it, it did pique my interest. And then um, I, I looked into a few other articles on it. I, I started researching. And uh, one book, and it's, it's mentioned in that video, uh, talks about how much easier it is to completely starve yourself, not eat anything, than it is to eat a really low-calorie diet. And, uh, I'll get into a little bit later, it's kind of some, some evidence I had with that that I didn't even realize at the time. Um, and so then the, the last straw that kind of broke the camel's back when we tried this was another video, and I'll put it back right over here. Uh, that one was from uh, one of the PBS channels, I think SciShow. Anyway, uh, and they were talking about the 
studies that are starting to come out on fasting and how fasting might actually be a better lifestyle and a lifestyle that's uh, closer to what people are supposed to eat. And this makes sense, right? I mean, if you look at even animals, uh, that they usually, yes, you whistle, uh, they usually don't tend to eat as often as humans do, uh, even in a, um, in a domesticated situation, in, in a wild situation, you see animals that go for days, and, you know, sometimes a week or more without eating, and then they go gorge themselves. In fact, if we look at bears, they, they go into hibernation and they don't eat for, for months. So we know that this is a, a thing that animals can do, and, and we would expect humans in the wild to encounter similar kind of issues uh, with what they're doing where they can't eat for a while. And it talked about the effects of insulin and how sugar produces insulin, which makes you gain fat and also makes you hungry as a byproduct, which again makes sense. If, if you're wandering through the wilderness, you haven't eaten in a few days, and suddenly you wander upon some food, you eat it, and your body says, whoa, there's, there's nutrients here. There's a treasure trove of energy. Uh, tell them to eat more. We need, we need to store this away. We don't know how long it's going to be before we eat again. And so, so the, the studies referenced in that video mainly revolve around rats, and I don't want to put too much stock into this, and I, you know, I kind of want to put a full disclaimer. I'm not encouraging anyone to do this until the science is out, but if, if you haven't noticed, I'm, I'm a fat guy. Like, you know, I got fat all over the place here, and um, I'm, you know, wanting to, to fix that. And it's not even about looks, it's, it's not a... You know, probably at one point in my life, it, it would have been a lot more about it, but I just, I'm married. I love her. She loves me. Don't care anymore. I'm, you know, I'd like to look good for her if that's something that she'd like, but it's not really a, a big driving factor in, in our relationship. Um, so, the, you know, that's that's not really a, a big deal for me. Um, and in fact, I, I don't even have a weight goal. A lot of people set a weight goal. They either look up their ideal weight and I... I've looked at mine before. I don't remember offhand what it is, but I, I've looked it up and I could do it again. But I don't have a weight goal. I don't actually uh, think of it in those terms. But actually, my goal is this, and it's going to require a full kind of health overhaul, uh, both strength-wise and, and weight-wise and other things. Uh, I want to do a pull-up. I want to be able to do a pull-up and uh, you know get to where you know maybe once I can do one, I can do more. Uh, but if I weighed, you know, I'm, I'm sitting uh, fully clothed at around 273 right now. If I weighed 273 and could do a pull-up, boom, I've, I've met my goal. And I, I feel like, you know, you're, you're probably uh, somewhat healthy. Maybe not as healthy as you could be, but somewhat healthy. If you can take and lift your weight in the, the manner that somebody, you know, scaling a wall would have to do without the use of your, your legs. <coughs> so, I mean, that, that's kind of a... A good metric for me. So, so that's my goal is is to be able to do a pull up, and obviously I, I I'm you know need to do strength training, but um, it's gonna take a whole lot of strength training to get me to where I can do a pull up at my current weight. There's a lot of weight that needs to come off, so uh, this is kind of uh, where we're at with that. So anyway, I've I've gone on for a while about what I'm doing. The main reason I want to get on here is to talk about my experience with it and how it's how it's going so far. So I told you I started on Tuesday with um, fasting. Um, actually, uh, sorry, I started on Wednesday. So Wednesday morning was my last meal. I ate a, a little package breakfast burrito with eggs and sausage and and whatnot comes in a you microwave thing. Nothing fancy. I ate that Wednesday morning. And it's something I've been wanting to do and I, I've been knowing I was going to do it. And then come lunchtime, I just I really wasn't that hungry so I didn't eat. And I decided, you know, okay, I've gone through lunch. I've gone through an eight-hour day. Let's, let's see how far I can take this thing. So I didn't eat dinner that night. Got it the next day. Did the same thing. It's now Friday after work. It's uh, probably 5.30, 6. Yes, I'll give you attention to. Uh, 6 p.m. And I haven't eaten from 
Wednesday morning at, you know, 8 a.m., 7 a.m., somewhere in there, <coughs> to 6 p.m. on Friday. I'll tell you a little bit about what my experience has been. Um, I was, I was kind of hungry at dinner time on Wednesday. Um... I've had a few times since then when I've been a little hungry, but it really hasn't been that bad of a thing. Um, you know, the hunger, it comes in waves, and it's a slight nuisance, I guess I'd call it. You know, it's, it's kind of like, have you ever scraped your arm or something, and then afterwards it itches? And, you know, you know you shouldn't scratch it. And if you just kind of ignore it for a little bit, it goes away. Like, it's not this this unbearable, like, thing. It's just like it itches, you ignore it, it goes away. It's been like that. And I, I was really surprised at how really undifficult this was to do. Um, and it's... I shouldn't be so surprised about it. Uh, because about five years ago, I, I, I got really good with losing weight. In fact, I was about where I was now when I started then. And I cut about 50 pounds. Uh, maybe maybe only 40. Uh, it, was, it was significant. It was 40 or 50 pounds. And um, I, I did it. I ate a very regimented diet. I ate for months. The same thing every day. And it, it wasn't a problem. Um, it was actually a little more difficult than what I'm doing now. But I'd go to McDonald's and I'd get a salad. Every once in a while I'd change it up and I had two snack wraps instead of a salad. But I had a salad every single day. I had a, a Newman's low-fat balsamic vinegar dressing with it. And uh, at the time, I wasn't even really looking at it as a fasting thing. It was a, it was a low carb thing for me, and uh, I just figured that would be enough. It'd be a salad, it'd be enough vitamins and minerals, and it had the protein from the chicken. It was what I needed to to keep going, and then I pull most of my energy from my fat reserves. Um, so I did that for months. I lost tons of weight. Uh, I was feeling great. I, I never felt bad. Uh, the thing that actually derailed me from the diet uh, was a, a life change. I, I ended up getting engaged and, and later on married. And, you know, for anyone who's who's been through this, you're going to know what I'm talking about. I'm not blaming her. This was, you know, it was, it was a net positive thing. It was a great thing. And and um, I wouldn't trade it for the world. But, it's, you know, it's just time to get focused again. But... Whenever you bring someone else into your life, you go from that, that single mode to, to either dating or, or even engaged. It, your schedule is no longer completely your own. It, it now becomes, you know, time you're going to spend with someone else and you have to agree on mutual activities. And that includes food and it, it just became, living in a regimented lifestyle like that became a much more difficult task. And even to the point of like, Anna will, will freely admit this, if we eat the same thing every day, like I'm the kind of person, I'll cook something early in the week and just eat that thing. I'll cook like a giant pot of like soup or something and I will eat the same thing every day for a week. I don't care. Does not bother me one iota. It drives Anna crazy. So this idea of me eating the same thing every day became difficult and um, there was also cost considerations and, and the extreme cost savings you reach when you, you buy things as a family instead of an individual. Uh, so so those, they, those are concerns cost wise as well as um, regiment wise and, and you know live with Anna and I had a short uh, period of, of doing getting back on what I was doing before eating a salad every day buying one at a, at a restaurant uh, but it the, the it worked fine I wasn't that hungry I lost the weight it was it was all good it was just sticking with that schedule whenever there's other considerations in your life and other people and you know, even my stepson now you know that becomes a consideration and uh, six-pack philosophy what I'm doing there and all that stuff kind of piles up 
So, what I'm able to do here is is fast through normal periods, and you know, one of the 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 part of the good news of this is is I don't have to worry about when social events come up. Because, for instance, I'm breaking fast uh, tomorrow because we're having a game night here at the house. There'll be a lot of people over. Um, uh, maybe I'll I'll get some video of us all having fun. I'll I'll see how the mood is going with that. Um, but there's gonna be a lot of people over, and I can just eat like normal when they're around. Um, don't have to be the weirdo guy. Hey, I brought this casserole. Y'all should all try it. And then you're like, I'm on a diet. That's uh, I can't I can't do that. And then you you have awkward conversations. It becomes like a centerpiece of your life, and that's one part I was hated about this is making my success or my failure or anything like a centerpiece of conversation I mean so it, which it seems kind of weird to make this video when that's the case but it just it always has been uh, a weird point for me on, on getting on a diet or even a workout regimen so I um, um I'm, I'm doing this and it's it's not costing me money because I'm not having to buy any food and it's uh, it's not been that difficult and it you know for whatever occasions come up I can eat and then go back to to the fast and uh, we'll we'll see how it works out um, I guess the only other thing I can add I'm gonna keep the camera rolling I'll probably cut this out to make it a little bit quicker but show you some of the the ways I'm keeping sane while not eating so I'll be right back all right I'm back um whistle decided that she had had enough scratches so she left but um during my period of fasting I'm doing a couple things so I I, I actually I'll, show, I'll put another video here I don't know who the creator is I just subscribed to him he's great um but this guy kind of examines medical cases um and then gives a synopsis and I, I, he he actually did a medical case I think YouTube recommended him uh, this video because um I had looked at some stuff on fasting of somebody who came off fasting uh, too quickly and because of that it shocked their system and they ended up having some serious medical complications and one of the causes was a vitamin B deficiency and you know that kind of uh, reinforced to me the need for staying on vitamins. They also had uh, issues with uh, magnesium so I wanted to, to keep on that as well. I don't want this to create another health issue for me. So I went and got some vitamins to take during the process. Uh, I am taking a quite complete multivitamin which is more or less the the off-brand Walmart version of um, uh, uh, Oh gosh, I can't think of the name of it. Um, uh, men's is it Centrum? Is that the vitamin thing? I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. I think it's Centrum. Uh, is the is the brand? Oh well, here I'll tell you. Uh, ingredients. A lot of these have compared to the ingredients in. Um, anyway, this one doesn't say compared to the ingredients in. Anyway, I think it's Centrum. Centrum Silver, yes. Centrum Silver for Men. That's what it is. This is the off-brand of Centrum Silver for Men. Um, and then we have here a supplement. This is a calcium, magnesium, and zinc supplement. That's going to be your bone and muscle. Uh, so you don't, you're not losing muscle mass as you do this. Uh, which is another problem that people have if they go on extreme fasting. I don't know if what I'm doing is considered extreme or not. Um, so those are going to keep my system going while I'm going. One other thing, and this is a weird thing I ran into even five years ago when I got on my diet, and how that relates to fasting, I kind of skipped over there, is it is what's called intermittent fasting when you only eat for a very short period of time every day. And it seems to be similar to, but not exactly the same as, as longer form fasting, uh, which is why I shouldn't be surprised that this is uh, starting to, to show results. So, table salt, right? Water. 
you need to stay hydrated. Uh, so much of the water you're getting every day comes from your food more than you realize. So you got to make up for that. You got to drink water. This is also going to help uh, satiate any appetite that you have. Uh, I like to put ice in mine and eat the ice. Uh, it kind of helps give me something to chew. Plus, it's, you need to swallow things because not swallowing for a long period of time can actually make it harder to swallow. So, where does this come in? This magical uh, compound, um, sodium chloride, is what your nerves use to move you around, to think, uh, to do all that, and you get so much of it in your food all the time. So you don't, you don't need to eat this, except when you're not eating. When you're not eating, you need salt. Um, if you've ever raised rabbits, you put a little salt rock in there. If you've ever been to the, uh, the local farm store, they have salt rocks for horses. Animals need salt. Uh, wars have been fought over salt. In fact, the word salary comes from the word salt because it was such a commodity. You need to eat salt. So here's, here's what happens. About twice a day, I get jittery. My, um, my thinking starts to, to break down. I, uh, I'm having trouble remembering stuff. I, I poured some salt in my hand. I eat it. And I drink water with it because the salt's going to dehydrate you, so you need to kind of reinforce that with water. And then about, I don't know, 10 minutes later, I feel good again, right as rain. Uh, I drink coffee in the mornings. So I'm not giving that up. Uh, but this this stuff will bring you back from that. Um, and, you know, so often we're told how bad salt is. And, in fact, I, I wonder about what we're going to find in the future on that because... Uh, the CDC actually found a. They weren't willing to change their recommendations, but the, the actually, there was a recent study done, and the study just looked at this the amount of salt people consumed and how long they live. Now, there could be other factors. There may be people who consume more salt, have more access to food or medical care. We know this. I'm not saying this is definitive evidence. People who consume the recommended amount of salt died earlier than people who consumed over the recommended amount of salt. On top of that, we need to be somewhat skeptical of the claim of the ill effects of salt because much of it is old data that was pulled from Chinese records where they used to consider it kind of a, a Harry Carey thing, honorable to commit suicide by salt. They would actually ingest so much salt that it killed them uh, because salt was a rich man's commodity, so that was a rich way to die. And they looked at some of the, th the ways people died by ingesting salt, and a lot of it has to do with thickening of the blood uh, to the point that you eventually can't move blood around and you die. So they associated salt with high blood pressure um, yet a lot of that was speculative evidence. Now, I don't want to say that salt doesn't contribute at all to blood pressure. And what I'm really going to encourage you to do is go check out the information yourself. Go do your research. Um, but do the research and don't just take it for granted that salt is bad. And also realize that Studies that are done on sick people don't always apply to healthy people. Uh, you know, if you do a study on how sugar affects the body and you call a bunch of diabetic people, you're going to get different results than if you just do a random sampling. And the same thing is true with salt. If you call in people who are known to have high blood pressure and test them and their salt intake, you may find that there's a correlation there, but that may be due to the fact that they already have high blood pressure, and this is an accentuator of that. And the body is completely able to work with salt outside of that. I've kind of gotten on a tangent here with salt. I'm, I'm actually, a, you know, a, a little skeptical of what's going on there. And if anyone has any studies or, or, or data that they, they would like to share with me on that, I would, I would love to hear it. Um, but... Um, 
I've, I found myself skeptical. But the point is, regardless of if salt is bad or good, if you're going to fast, you need to eat it. So all that said, I want to, you know, end this with, with the disclaimer. This is not an endorsement of this for you. Uh, even, if, even if you watch this and six months down the road I'm looking healthy and great and I'm feeling great, what works for me doesn't necessarily mean it works for you. Here's what I'm going to encourage you to do. Do your research. Check this out. Um, check out some of those videos I've linked and see what you think. See if this works for you. If you find another diet that's working right for you, you're going to your doctor and, and your numbers are looking good and you're losing weight, you're feeling great, don't, don't necessarily do this. Do what works for you. But uh, I just wanted to share this and you know I guess you'll get a little bit of an experiment to watch me because either I'm going to get healthier I'm going to fail this diet in some way. I'm going to like break my fast and not be able to get back on it. Or I'm going to get unhealthy in some way. My blood pressure is going to get high. I'll die early. Maybe I'll have a heart attack. And you guys can look at this and say, well, I, you know, I might want to be skeptical of that. Um, so this is, um, I'm documenting. And this is what I'm doing. So uh, thanks, everybody. Um, Talk to you later, whenever I put a video out. Bye.